Hello there monsters and men, ladies and people and welcome to Recharging and welcome to the range test of the x G9, the bigger SUV sibling of the x P7. In theory this car should have a WLTP range of 570 kilometers. Well, I do say this car but I mean the long range version of this car. There's also a standard range version that has 460 kilometers. And of course, there is the top of the range, this car, the performance version with 520 kilometers of WLTP range. It is currently winter-ish, it's more autumn, yeah, it's not really winter, it is 8 degrees Celsius and as you can see, it is raining. So, I will not do that 520 kilometers, but I think we get pretty close because from my experience so far, the x G9 is a really efficient car for such a big SUV. You know the drill, I will do one test at 90 km per hour to simulate those mixed driving conditions and I will do one test at 130 km per hour. The car is charging up and then let's go! Yeah, there is one thing while doing my range test and that is a bug in the software in this x G9. And the bug is that I cannot see my state of charge in percentage, so I have to guess how much I have used. But I have driven 53 kilometers, so my expectation is that I used a little bit over 10% state of charge, probably 12, 13, because my average consumption at the moment is 20.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. It should have a battery pack of around 95 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So again, around 13% state of charge I have used at the moment. Anyway, the range it seems like right now, if I do a little bit of guessing and calculation, is over 450 kilometers. And in these conditions, for such a big car that has a WLTP range of 520 kilometers, I think that's really good. Overall, my impressions of this x G9 with the time I have driven in it, it is an efficient car for such a big SUV crossover. It is impressive. What is also impressive are the seats. It's really comfortable. It's really quiet in here. It's really quiet in the x G9. This is a really comfortable ride. And also look at the headlights. They are amazing. This, those are probably one of the best headlights that I have encountered on a car so far. Again, it is a really impressive car, this x G9. Anyway, I will keep on driving. Oh, then the cruise control is going back to 100. No, you should drive 93 because that is 90 on the speedo. But anyway, I will keep on driving and well, you will get a next, uh, next update. I am in Germany, but I am not driving 200 kilometers an hour. So the Germans are probably thinking, what are you doing? Why are you driving so slow? Because you can drive much faster if you want to, but well, it's a range test. It's part of the range test. Alrighty. I have to say that having no state of charge in percentage makes these status updates kind of tricky. I have no idea what I'm saying. I mean, at the moment, I think, or maybe I hope, that I have used around 33% state of charge and I have driven 163.7 kilometers, so that means a range of around 480 kilometers. But again, is that something that I hope, which I do a little, don't know why, or is it a fact? I don't know if it is a fact because I cannot see it. Yes, I'm holding my hand on the steering wheel. Thank you. So yeah, I'll keep on going. The car is using 20.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So that is pretty good. But besides that, there is not a whole lot that I can say at the moment. I will just keep on driving and well, you will, I will, you will, I'm blah, 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 blah. I will get back to you when I am at the charger, because another status update, again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, so I am sitting in a car that can charge with a maximum of 320 kilowatts. I am currently at a Tesla supercharger, because that is the cheapest option for me. And the car is charging with 75 kilowatts. I mean, what? That is not even one fourth of what it can do. That is disappointing. I even tried a different stall, but... Yeah, didn't matter, didn't matter. So I'm going to try another charger after the 130 kilometers per hour test, but again, this is disappointing. Anyway, let's get to the result of the 
90 km per hour test. I started the test with 82% and I arrived at the charger with 32%. That means I've used 50%. On that 50% I have done 237.5 kilometers times two is 475 kilometers with the Xpeng G9 performance in these conditions. And again, not a whole lot of wind around eight degrees Celsius, but raining and wet roads. The average consumption was 20.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and I have to admit the result is not bad if you ask me I mean this is a big car with a lot of power again it is the performance 2400 kilograms under 0 to 100 in under four seconds it's insane also cars really comfortable full of tech so 475 kilometers in these conditions not bad for this type of car the x G9, in my opinion, is a efficient car. And also in more spring summer conditions, I do think that you can do or get really close to the WLTP range of again, 520 kilometers of this car. Yeah, well done x -Peng. well done. That also means that for the standard range version and the long range version, I also do expect that you can get the WLTP range in spring summer conditions. All right, I am charging up and then I will do the 100, 130 kilometers per hour test. After that, I will go to a different charger and I can hopefully do a charging test if the charger can deliver 800 volts because I'm not sure, because I am never in this region. I am normally in a different part. So I am doing my 130 kilometers per hour test, but since I cannot see my state of charge in percentage, it is really difficult to give you a accurate update. The only thing that I can say at the moment is that, well, as you can see, I am at a turnaround point. Um, I have driven 95 kilometers so far, so not that much yet. Oh, that's not green for me, now it is. And the average consumption during the last 100 kilometers is that correct? 23, 24. It said 23.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I mean, that can't be right. Although I have to say the car is not consuming a lot. It is really efficient at higher speeds. It does have a drag coefficient of 0 0.27. So that helps a lot. But again, I don't have to yell. In most cars, I have to yell when driving 130 kilometers per hour. This car is super quiet. It's really, really impressive. Again, it says consumption during last 100 kilometers, 24. I can't be right. For some reason, the trip meter does not reset properly. At least the consumption trip meter. The distance trip meter does, but the consumption trip meter, it really does not. Um, does not reset properly. During my last 20 kilometers, it says that my consumption is around 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That makes a bit more sense. That makes a bit more sense. Anyway, I will keep on cruising. Hopefully I can bring it down to minus or a lower than 10% uh, state of charge. But unfortunately, again, I can't see it. And then hopefully we can do a proper charging test with a warm battery. I have to be honest, I fucked up here a little bit during my 130 kilometers per hour test. Here is the situation. First of all, I can't see my state of charge in percentage, which is super annoying while doing a range test. This is a bug in the software. It will come back, but still for now it is annoying. But the thing is, after my 130 kilometers per hour test, I wanted to do a charging test because this car can charge with 320 kilowatts. To do a proper charging test, I have to be below 10%. But I have to guess when I am under that 10%, which again is super annoying. So I did that. I reached a charger, barely, but on the internet, it was saying these chargers were 350 kilowatts, but they are not. They are 200 kilowatts, 400 volt chargers. The only 800 volt chargers that I know of are Ionity and well, they are not nearby anywhere here. So that is not an option for me. So 
gone is a charging test. I cannot do a charging test anymore. This is the last evening that I have the car. It is already half past 12 in the night. So I want to go home and want to go to sleep because in the morning I have to hand over the car. That also means I cannot do a 130 kilometers power test anymore. And the reason I am saying that is because, well, I have done um, some kilometers while driving 130 kilometers per hour. Um, but the trip meter is gone. I locked the car and I unlocked the car. So that means the trip meter has reset itself. And also the trip meter that registers, registers your kilometers after charging is also gone because I am charging. So uh, I don't know exactly how much kilometers I have driven while doing 130 kilometers per hour. And this is really annoying. And again, I fucked up and I'm sorry. But I can give you an estimate from what I've done because of course I have looked in the meantime how much kilometers I've driven. So here is the range while doing 130 kilometers per hour. But again, this is not the exact, this is not the exact number. This is a estimation based on the data that I saw while driving. Again, I'm sorry. I started the test with 70% state of charge and I arrived at the charger with 4% and that one is true. So that means I've used 66%. On that 66% I have driven around 200 kilometers. So that means the range while driving 130 kilometers per hour with this car is around 300 kilometers in these conditions. Again, around 8 degrees Celsius. Sometimes some rain, but barely any wind. So that is the estimate that you can do while driving 130 kilometers per hour. Again, sorry that this is not the exact amount. I said enough sorry now. But besides that, I have to say this car while doing 130 kilometers per hour, super quiet, super comfortable and efficient. I, think, I find this a efficient SUV. What helps with the efficiency? while well, doing 130 kilometers per hour is that, well, this car has a drag coefficient of 0.27, which for this type of car is really low. So again, well done, x -Pang. The P7 was efficient and this G9 is also an efficient EV. Again, well done, well done. All right, the car is charging. I think I've charged enough to reach my home. So I'm going home and I'm going to bed. Thank you a lot for watching. If you liked it, please give a like and do subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. And then again, thank you a lot for watching and as always to be continued. Mm -hmm.